film is a real silent classic. It's uh, G.W. Pabst's 1929 version of Pandora's Box. The play that this film is based on was subtitled A Tragedy of Monsters, and it was very famous in Germany and had already, already once been filmed before Pabst's version, but Pabst's version has a very significant change made to it that I think makes the film much better because one of the aspects, the major aspects he changed makes the film far less predictable and I think in some ways truer to life. The play this film was based on was probably really written in the late 1890s which when you think about that it, it makes sense because there's a, an anachronism in the film which there's a, a historical figure who would have been if he was still alive by the 1920s he would have been a very old man and I, I can't say who it is at this point because it would it would be a spoiler to the end of the film also the other key thing here to note is that Pabst changed a very significant detail about Lulu's character from the original play and again I can't mention that here yet because it would be a huge spoiler for the rest of the film, but I will talk about it later at length as soon as that scene comes up. G.W. Pabst was probably the most independent filmmaker in Germany in his time, and he was completely self-financed. And as we go through the film, we will see that this film is very unlike Hollywood films in a lot of other ways, some of which I will, if I catch it as it's as it's appearing on the screen I will point out some certain things the other interesting thing about this film is that it was made only a few years before the rise of Hitler in Germany which meant the end of Pabst's career he was no longer allowed to make films because he he wouldn't follow the rules that the Nazis gave him now compared to other big productions of the time this is a fairly low budget film and Pabst only uses a single camera and a single camera Superb. Whoever uh, th or this cameraman that Pabst used was a, a real genius and he was a real artist, a real craftsman, as we will see in the shots used throughout the film. All the actors here are extremely well cast and it's a very talented, talented cast and crew used to make this movie, especially uh, the lead actress who plays Lulu, which is the great Louise Brooks. I think Louise Brooks is possibly the greatest actress of all time. She started out as a, as a professional dancer and then became a, a, an actress. And in the silent film era, this wasn't that uncommon. Dolores Costello, who, I, who was the lead in the last film that I made a commentary for, also started out as a chorus girl and then she became an actress. And in these films, in silent films, I think, I think this is actually a pretty smart move because there's no dialogue, so theater training in one sense for these films is somewhat useless because the actors in these films rely on gestures, facial expressions, and movement to uh, play their roles, not on, on speaking. So here again, I think using a, da a professional dancer, who in this case was also a very gifted actress, is the smart move. I have personally wanted to make a commentary of this film for a very long time. I first saw a picture, a still, some still shots of Louise Brooks from this film when I was probably a teenager, and I couldn't forget her beautiful face, even only after seeing her, just seeing from seeing those still photographs, and eventually I was able to watch this entire film. I think uh, among actresses, there are probably many of them that were as beautiful as Louise Brooks was, especially in the 1920s there were some many incredible beauties that were on the screen, but I don't think any of them had her talent or her personality, which both of which puts her on another level far above uh, most other actresses. Now this little old man here shown in the opening scenes, uh, I've read in different plot summaries and descriptions of the film that he is either, some say he's either her adopted dad or her pimp, and in this, uh, for the sake of this commentary, I'm going to assume that 
both of these statements are true. Lulu here is at, the, at this point in the film is the mistress of a wealthy uh, magazine publisher, Dr. Ludwig Schoen. Pabst had been for two years trying to make this film and he, what held him back was that he couldn't find a, a suitable actress to play Lulu. And he finally saw, he was, he was about to give up and he was going to have Marlene Dietrich play her, which he, he didn't want her in the role. And he saw a small part of, with Louise Brooks uh, playing in another film and he instantly decided that he wanted her to play Lulu. And personally, I don't think any other actress would have been as good in this role because of the style of acting that Louise Brooks acted and how well Pabst knew how to uh, get the right reactions out of her in order to have the right emotions for each scene. The other thing that turned out to be a bonus for uh, for Pabst that he, he didn't know at the time was that Louise Brooks was a, had been a professional dancer and in fact, not just a, even that sounds like an understatement, she was such a good dancer that she had been trained in ballet by Martha Graham. And if even I know who Martha Graham is, you know she must be somebody important. And it turns out in this film, Lulu was a professional dancer. So it was another lucky accident of casting that helped the film. Oh yeah, without a doubt, this old man definitely was her first pimp. We see at about 627 into the clip here that he tries to use his pimp hand on her. Pabst himself was somewhat of a genius at working with actors. Instead of trying to manipulate them or threaten them into uh, getting the performance that he wanted, what he would do is, is he would figure out, in some to usually very quickly, so that he only had to shoot his scenes each with only a very few takes, what would make the what, what he could do to produce the real emotion in the actors that he wanted to come out in the scene, and then he would create that circumstance as they were filming. So the reactions on the faces of the actors are often real emotion, not fake and not, not simulated. Another thing that's interesting about this film, and I only knew this from reading Brooks's autobiography where she talks about the filming of this movie, is that the other actors all uh, hated her. They thought she wasn't a very good actress. And even this, Pabs usually figured out how to use this to his advantage to get better performances out of the other actors. And note, as, as you watch through parts of these films, see, uh, see if you can spot any uh, signs of the, the certain actor's uh, distaste for Louise Brooks, especially the, the actor who plays uh, Dr. Schoen. He really hated her the most, apparently, at, uh, from reading what, what Brooks herself says in, in her biography. And he, this is interesting because his character, uh, he does seem to have, or shows at times, both love or passion and hatred for her at the same time. Ah, if the old man is going to be left alone, he at least needs his booze. Personally, I don't think these other actors... Uh, dislike or uh, disrespect for Louise Brooks had anything based in truth. I think she's not only a, a great actress or was a great actress, but also was, was incredibly beautiful. Even the 1920s, uh, they had some incredible beauties making films in the 1920s, but in my personal opinion, I, I think that Louise Brooks was the most beautiful of all of them. The creator of the comic strip, <clears throat> Dixie Dugan, which ran from, I think, 1928 until probably the early 50s, was probably so infatuated with Louise Brooks that he, he based his character of Dixie Dugan, who was a showgirl who became an actress, which is exactly like Louise Brooks. He made her look exactly like her and wrote about her life, at, which was very, very similar to Louise Brooks's life. Personally, I can't blame him for any for any of this because Louise Brooks is was so beautiful that once you start watching her, you can't stop looking at her. After watching this film, personally, I can't imagine another actress playing this role, and I hope, partly for that reason, I hope this film is never remade. But I think now that I've said that, probably some producer in Hollywood is going to be planning for maybe perhaps the spring of 2024 
to reshoot this movie with Lady Gaga playing Lulu. Now the thinking behind something like this would be along the lines of, uh, based on off her performance in A Star Is Born, that a Lady Gaga starring role in, uh, in a remake of Pandora's Box would be instant best picture winner. Now as much as I like Lady Gaga, she has an incredibly beautiful voice. She's too old to play Lulu. Lulu's character is supposed to be in her early 20s. <clears throat> Even Marlene Dietrich was probably almost too old to play the character, even though she was only 25 at the time. And herein lies, I think, the difference of, that shows the, the imagination of what Pabst wanted to do. He rejected all the other actresses who tried out for the role because they insisted on playing Lulu's character exactly like the theater actresses had played her and the one film which had been made, the previous film, which, in which all the actresses played Lulu as if she was an old whore. Seeing Louise Brooks's performances on screen, or the one performance of Louise Brooks that he had seen on screen, he knew she wasn't going to play Lulu in this uh, manner. And here shows this kind of, this shows sort of the genius and the imagination of G.W. Pabst because his reinterpreting this character and yet changing nothing else in the story is the real genius of why this movie is so good. And he makes something that's far better than the original play. What Pabst does in the case of this story is, is he makes, by one change, he makes Lulu's character both much more likable and more understandable, which both of these things are big, big enhancements to the story. Because of his vision of how this film should be, I think Pabst should be considered a genius of a director on the same level as, say, a Lois Weber. Oscar-winning uh, special effects man John Chambers was, I believe, quoted as saying that a rhesus monkey could be taught how to direct a film. And I think if you're talking about Hollywood films, I think John Chambers is right. But not in this case, where if you're talking about an art film, you need somebody with a vision and creativity to maybe be able to reinterpret the story in ways such as how in this one is done that bring out hidden features or enhance the, the story in other areas. This part is actually, I think, one of the few slightly comedic parts of the film, but maybe because I've watched this film now so many times, it does sort of come across as an uneasy kind of laughter, sort of like when you narrowly miss crashing into another car or escape from a situation where things could have been much worse than what they were. This old man is a bad influence. Now the dog can get drunk too. Okay, because of uh, YouTube's 15 minute limits, which they strictly enforce on me, I have to cut this uh, right before Act 1 ends, so part of a minute and a half, I think, of Act 1 is going to be at the beginning of Part 2. Sorry. I really wanted to end this part on uh, a long shot of Louise Brooks's beautiful face. <laughs> 